Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. Earlier in the show, we talked a little bit about mental health issues as it affects not only all Americans, but returning vets uh, from uh, Iraq, for example, and that we have 20 to 22 people who commit suicide who are returning vets every day. That's that number is huge to me. It's uh, we're not taking care of our our vets. To me, our guest is Perry Cockrell. Uh, Perry uh, is uh, was born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas. He's a licensed practicing trial and appellate attorney in Texas and a retired Navy commander. And he's written a trilogy called A Private War. And we're going to talk a little bit about a lot of different stuff. Uh, Perry, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you, Mark. I'm I'm really curious. Does that number of of suicides bother you from our returning vets? It sure does, and I I I hope that they can get some help. Um, I did not have the kind of experience they did. That, those must have been the soldiers who were really in the the combat area for a long time and must have had some real real problems. So I wish there's something that can be addressed, but I hear that all the time. I'm not a, an expert on that. I didn't have post-traumatic stress syndrome myself. I've just read about it through other books, and I heard a lady speak, a lady that went to Iraq. Her name was Kayla Williams, and she had written a book herself. Plenty of times when we get home, she was married to a soldier who had a lot of trouble when he came back. I do know they had trouble coming back, and sometimes the war is a drug, believe it or not. They like to go back over there because they're engaged. They have something to do. They have a mission. And then when they come back to civilian life, some of them have a real problem adjusting to a civilian job. That could be that could be part of it. Well, if they're on the front line, they're trained to kill. It would seem to me that coming back has got to be a problem. There, what's There's a... Um, I it's, it, I can't think of the name Barry, the uh, TV show Barry. I think it's on Netflix. Uh, is about a returning vet and he comes back and he can't get a job and he becomes a killer for hire. And and then he becomes an actor. But uh, it while it's it's presented humorously at the same time, it is a big issue, and it's something that we need to take a look at. Yeah, I when I wrote these when I wrote this the second book was about this the first book is about a a fictional story of World War Two about a soldier fighting in the European campaign, but the second book was about him experiencing time having trouble adjusting. And I used that Kayla Williams book to figure out how the how the character would act and behave and what he was going through. Um, I also know that journalists, and I've heard this many and you can uh, times, and you can read this online and things like that. Journalists experience the same type of symptoms, and this is true in the, even you know in all the wars. You know, in the World War II, which is one I covered in the book, those journalists like Ernie Pyle, they mm-hmm. really experienced some difficult time with death, death, and and the killing. And so they have, they end up having the same types of symptoms like that. I'm not an expert on it, but I, I know that it's, it would, it sounds natural. If you have a job that's high stress and causes you a lot of, of trouble, you're going to carry that home with you. Well, at the same time, just having some kind of traumatic experience, a car accident, having a kid get married and, you know, uh, all of this stuff can, as far as I understand, contribute to post-traumatic stress syndrome, PTSD. I mean, let's face it, our lives are complicated here in the U.S. Yeah, and they back in World War II, they didn't call it post-traumatic stress syndrome. And I do go into the, remember when um, General Patton goes after those two 
young soldiers because of, or one of them because that's what he was experiencing, and he really got on to him. They didn't realize how difficult it was for some of those people, I mean, some of the soldiers, and um, they called it a different name, a, a, a right. neurosis combat, combat fatigue, and then the Vietnam, they used a different name there, too, and then PS, PTSD. And what is what is, do you have a special fascination with World War II as compared to Iraq and and I hate to say modern day wars because I I like to think that we don't have those anymore. But actually, I, I I ran my name on the internet to see what would come up, and it, my name came up under Afro dot com, and so I wondered why I would be there, and I looked that up and I read about a an interesting black journalist in World War Two, the first credentialed black journalist to cover World for the European theater. And he had interviewed a black soldier in Normandy who had the same ma- name as I as me. And I thought that was he had, his That's name was Private Perry Cockrell from Mississippi and he fought on the fields of Normandy. And this journalist Ollie Stewart interviewed him along with a lot of others so I read about Ollie Stewart and that's where I got the idea to write this book that covered his life but it was a fictional character in the book but based loosely on what he did and it was kind of unbelievable he he went to the European theater and then he went to the Casablanca conference. He interviewed Josephine Baker when she was in Morocco. Then he covered Tuskegee Airmen in in Sicily, and then he went to Italy. Then he went back to England, and then he covered the invasion of Normandy. There were only six black journalists sent to the European theater, and then others, I think there were 30 in all, that were sent in other parts of the world. And he was on a ship at one, with Ernie Pyle and, and the other journalists that sailed from England to or to Morocco at the beginning of the African campaign. And uh, from that story, I then uh, studied about the, the contributions about the, of the black soldiers. So I used it as a way to, although it's a fiction book. The, it has a lot of that in it that's real that just covers the black African American contribution during World War II so it it gave me another side that I had never really read about I knew about the Tuskegee Airmen but I didn't really know Mm -hmm. much Mm -hmm. what they did and I didn't realize that the term Black Panther was the term used by the the Black Panther tank 761st uh, tank division from um, Fort Hood, Texas, which was called Camp Hood. I didn't realize that. Hmm. They were, they were sent to New York, sent to England, trained for another month, given brand new tanks, and then they came across Normandy a few weeks after the initial invasion. So you had the Tuskegee Airmen coming from Africa, Sicily. Then you had a tank uh, division coming from. Uh, through France, and then there were 4,000 what they call Buffalo Soldiers that fought in Italy. And so though, and these were combat, all of these were combat soldiers. There's a lot of information the black soldier was not allowed to fight, but that was being corrected in the Army at the very end. And in 1919, I mean, in 1945, there was actually a black and white integrated unit that fought, was trained in France and fought all the way to Germany. You don't hear about that. The integration really didn't occur until 1948 when Truman ordered it, but it was it was it was going on. They began it uh, the change of that during the war. That's a it's a shameful part of our history. Yeah, that, is is that one of the reasons why you decided to to write about this? No, no, it just happened. It just happened that way on a, <laughs> when I found out. It about this private having the same name as me. It just, one one thing led to another. You know, I've never written a fiction book. I've written many things as a, as a lawyer all the time, but I've never done fiction. And so I 
was trying to do a factual story about him, but I realized I didn't have enough information. It would have been a, an information article, so I began to create a story line around him, and it's the first time I ever put fiction together. And fiction requires character, it requires a plot, and things like that, of all of which I'm not used to doing. Uh, you and, also uh, integrated uh, some music in all three of the books. Uh, the first two books are, are A Private War and A Private War II, um, and Tatiana's War is the third book. Uh, and you use R- Todd Rundgren's music in these? Yeah, I love his music. <laughs> and I found that he has a lot of songs, and I I only took songs that were relevant to what was really going on in the in the book. So the fact that it's his music, you wouldn't really know because you would read, you just read lines, and uh, and that just came later. It's almost a musical, so to speak, because it has a lot of songs throughout the book, throughout all three books, and that was that just happened. I. Uh, I like what he writes about and his songs would weave into the plot the the story is, really is about two black soldiers that go to war and one of them accidentally shoots him the other accidentally except he's put on trial and the jack officer believes it was an intentional killing and so he is tried and these, and, and these journalists have trouble discover, trying to decide what to do about this court martial because it's really Unusual, and they want to report stories about the black soldier that are good. Now, this is a fiction book, so they they grapple with this. So they don't want to retort, report a story that might make the soldier look bad. Of course, this is not true, but it was just for the purposes of conflict. But there was a lot of conflict with black and white at that time within the uh, within the army, navy. Uh, there, it wasn't as integrated as it would be today. No, and there was, I discovered, that was one of the hard things about writing this book, is that that was very hard to read, and I didn't like to read that. So this is why I, I took a different angle. I didn't want to, I didn't want a story about this that, that had racism, that was based on racism, at least in the first book. Right. And right. so the first book does dodges racism. Now the second book, the soldier comes back and he's, upset about his time in the war being wrongfully charged with this crime of shooting his friend which he didn't which I don't want to say too much about it and no so we gotta read the book I know I'm telling you too much <laughs> and so he does think he was wrongfully charged and the, that book second book explores racism and the origins of racism and things of that, like that uh, our uh, guest is uh, is Perry Cockerell he is the uh, author of A Private War, A Private War Two, and Tatiana's uh, War. And we're going to continue our conversation for a few minutes in just a moment. You can find his books, by the way, at Amazon.com, Amazon.com. All right, join us at Late Night Health, Late Night Health, and we'll have all kinds of information there that's kind of interesting for you, pictures of Daryl and me and... Uh, some of our guests as well. All right, we're going to take a time out. We will be back as Late Night Health continues. Latest from the greatest, the best in new music by classic rockers, with your host, the insane Daryl Wayne. This is Alice Cooper, and if Daryl Wayne is insane, what does that make me criminally insane? Stick around to find out. Many of the artist interviews for the latest from the greatest have been captured on audiobook. There is a volume one and volume two. Great information and conversations with people in the industry and people surrounded by the industry, and of course, the rock stars themselves. I'm the Reverend Al Green, and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne. And I said, Wayne Insane. You can find it on Amazon or Blackstone Audio. Search for the latest from the greatest from Daryl Wayne, D-A-R-R-E-L-L-W-A-Y-N-E. Hello, this is Weird Al Yankovic, and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne, aren't you? <laughs> uh. 
There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of carbon-60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's carbon-60 is the premium carbon-60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize-winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxic and cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his carbon-60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com.